So, a lot of reviews have come out today, just an overdose of reviews have come out today in regards to the PlayStation 5. Way too many to read and cover everything that's been said, but in this video, I'm going to cover some of the ones that I've personally looked into, and I'm also going to cover the backwards compatibility uh, controversy, speed test comparison controversy that's going around right now as well. I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about, but we're going to go look through these reviews just to give you a general idea of how to feel about the PlayStation 5, even though I know most of you want to buy it regardless. Let's look at these reviews. So I've taken a few here. The first one we're going to cover is from Destructoid, and one of the comments I've pulled out from the review states, I have had issues moving this behemoth around, even in terms of twisting it to plug in stuff behind it. It's semi-wobbly when placed horizontally, which is more of a slight annoyance than a major problem. I know it's weird to start with kind of a negative PlayStation 5 thing, but there's so much positive. I, I wanted to see that they can't all be positive. There's some negatives here, and I'm, I'm going to give you a general idea at the end of the video what the overall idea of the PlayStation 5 is, but for this... We know the PlayStation 5 is big. We already knew that. I'm going to put mine beside my TV and not really pay attention to it as much. I don't know about you guys. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are going to be in the same boat. Just put it somewhere and not really pay attention to it. But he even highlights here that it's a slight annoyance and not a major problem. So I think most of us should be fine. But throughout some of the reviews, the size has been brought up that it could be an issue for some or others just might not care. So moving on to the second comment that I pulled out from the Destructoid review, the good news is that the controller on paper seems hardier on its own. It feels higher in quality compared to the DualShock 4. And in my test, the battery lasts a few hours more on a single charge. So I've seen online, I believe from pushsquare.com that they state that it's about 13 hours on a single charge and uh, with adding all the features such as the haptic feedback and stuff like that that could play into the battery life as well But 13 hours is already a crazy amount of time I'm just wondering how the average is seeing how everybody else uh, Talks about the battery life for the controller. I didn't see that as much, but uh, 13 hours regardless is a lot of battery life and here and here from destructoid It's better than DualShock 4 is music to my ears But I wonder how much of an issue is going to be for a lot of people who get the charging bay like I did I'm gonna put my controller on there and not really pay attention as much to it You know just put it there charge pick it up the next day So I'm probably gonna have all the features on all the time, but to continue to the next comment a few legacy issues aside, Sony is jumping into the next generation pool with both feet. The DualSense controller is markedly different from the DualShock 4. The PS5's general look and feel is a stark departure. Its UI is entering new territory as well with some interesting features. It has bona fide good exclusives and first party games to paddle day one, but not all of it is perfectly executed. If you one day have the option to choose between the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, and want to feel like next gen is upon you the playstation 5 will probably be a better fit as it has several real exclusives and the new dual sense tech both consoles have far more positives than negatives and simultaneously look to the future as well as the past for that reason it's hard to choose an early winner amid all of this constant competition and innovation we all win cheesy i know but we could use we could all use some solace right now so in regards to the playstation 5 and xbox series X direct comparison. I've seen this kind of across other reviews that the Xbox Series X feels more of a transition from the Xbox One era, while the PlayStation 5 seems to take a bit more of a leap, especially with the DualSense controller. So if you want to feel next gen, the DualSense controller will bring that to you, the change in the PlayStation 5's UI. So it's kind of consistent with what I'm reading here from Destructoid. But to continue to the next website, Games Industry and their review, I highlighted one one big comment, one big section from their review, and it reads, The Xbox Series X feels more like an extension of its predecessor, and PlayStation 5 is full of bits of tech designed to make their games feel more immersive. Spider-Man Miles Morales is like the game that came before it on the previous console, but the extra technical touches enables it to take a bigger step towards becoming effectively an interactive Marvel movie. About 20% into the game, there is an epic scene on a bridge that is thrilling to experience for the first 
first time from the story, the direction, the audio, the way it looked and how it felt in my hands. It's not just the technology, the boot up sound, the UI, even the aesthetic of the console, like it or load it, with the lights that bounce off the white fins, looks like the outside of my local sin world. It feels premium. Over the last five years, PlayStation has established this identity as the purveyor of huge, expensive blockbuster games, and PlayStation 5 is the console manifestation of that. For studios making those sorts of experiences and gamers who enjoy those products, this machine is purpose-built for them. So again, like the previous review, the PlayStation 5 feels like a bigger step as opposed to the Xbox Series X, which feels like more of a transition or they stay here an extension. So the PlayStation 5 with the, the console itself, the UI, the, the boot up as they state here, the controller and how it makes you feel, the audio, that whole combination along with their big blockbuster first party games that come from Sony, that is just the experience is is a premium experience as games industry notes here versus what you're getting on the Xbox Series X. Of course, this is not to say the Xbox Series X doesn't have big blockbusters as well. It just doesn't have that right now. And obviously, it doesn't have what the DualSense offers. And it doesn't have that big combination that you get with the DualSense with the 3D audio and the big blockbuster combination, which is all very impactful to the end user experience and is what you're going to get on the PlayStation 5 from day one which is a very very big positive on PlayStation side so the next website that I want to cover is IGN but IGN makes a statement that I've seen a couple of reviews make in regards to the lineup that the PlayStation 5 has and they kind of tried to make it seem like the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X both have a lackluster you know cross-gen uninteresting lineup which is a ridiculous statement to make yes spider-man miles morales and sackboy a big adventure are on playstation 4 but they'll play way better on playstation 5 especially miles morales will look tremendously more better on playstation 5 and you also have exclusives only on playstation 5 like godfall and like demon souls which is demon souls specifically on playstation 5 and nowhere else and in terms of console space godfall is only on playstation 5 those are next gen next gen games and I, I just kind of wanted to make a quick note of that because they try to make it seem like oh both next gen consoles don't really have great you know lineups for their launch day which is again a ridiculous statement to make I think people need to stop saying that because it's just it's not factual but to go beyond that here's IGN's video and I wanted to just cover their verdict part of this video and what they state over there with a launch lineup dominated by games that are also available on PS4 and on the back of a generation already punctuated with incrementally more powerful hardware revisions like the PS4 Pro, the PS5 doesn't quite land as a knockout punch yet, but it's definitely got the power and speed to be a real contender, although the jury's out on the stamina of that tiny 667GB SSD. However, while the PS5's well-considered UI and blisteringly quick loading times for PS5 games make it a pleasure to use, it's the DualSense controller that's proven to be the surprise haymaker I never saw coming. It truly leaves other controllers feeling primitive in comparison. So it's a pretty huge statement to say the DualSense controller leaves other controllers feeling primitive in comparison, but I get the idea there that if you use a DualSense controller often and a lot of games support the DualSense controller's features of haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. Trying to go to something else that doesn't have those features will feel probably a bit more empty. And I guess this was Sony's goal to really change how you feel when you use a controller and not just provide you with another similar controller to what you already have, which is of course a goal very much achieved from all of these reviews. And we'll, we're gonna hear about it with the last review here, which is from Game Informer, which they have a very, very good review for the PlayStation 5. And I originally wanted to highlight so many comments, but it would have made this video 30, 40 minutes long. So I want to highlight a few points that they made. They state that they love the design of the PlayStation 5 and compare it to a billion Air's yacht. They state that the PlayStation 5 is whisper quiet, which we've heard across multiple reviews. And of course, it's great to hear. Games made specifically for the PlayStation 5 have instantaneous loading speeds like Spider-Man Miles Morales, which we've seen a lot of. But PS4 games have less of a dramatic speed improvement. And we're going to talk about that in the latter half of this video. But for the dual sense part of this, I actually want to read the section from the Game Informer article because it's very consistent with everything else that we're hearing. 
They state, the real revelation is the novelty of the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. Dual interior actuators create evocative effects from the feeling of tiny creatures moving back and forth inside to a more nuanced sensation of movement and footfalls than older rumble tech could replicate. The adaptive triggers provide resistance and tension for actions like firing a gun or breaking a car. In combination, the DualSense fulfills the promise of a controller that genuinely assists immersion in a powerful way. So again, across the board, we've been hearing across multiple reviews, just such glowing reviews, remarks regarding the DualSense controller that it is the real actual next-gen step across any platform going forward. And I cannot wait to actually play this thing i have the controller now but i want to actually feel those playstation 5 games in my hand and i'm t i'm just so excited for it i'm happy to see these reviews coming out now in terms of the backwards compatibility controversy it's really simple so let's just break it down playstation 5 is running backwards compatible games more so at 60 frames per second locked as opposed to the series x where it's running backwards compatible games sometimes lower than 60 frames per second and there's a simple explanation for for this Xbox Series X is trying to run Xbox One X games which are native 4k while PlayStation 5 is running PlayStation 4 Pro games which are checkerboarded 4k not native 4k and honestly for me I can't really I can't really tell the difference between the two unless I put the screens right by each other and really start to look. I can't really tell the difference between checkerboarded versus native. So if you're somebody who really likes FPS over resolution, PlayStation 5 will run backwards compatible games more so at locked 60 frames per second more of the time as opposed to the Series X. And in terms of load speeds for backwards compatible games, what we're seeing is that the Series X is loading games slightly faster than the PlayStation 5 when we all expected the PlayStation 5 to load it at twice the speed as the Series X. So I'm going to put this down to just Microsoft has a better backwards compatibility solution. They've been working on it longer and clearly seemingly have found out a way to really take advantage, let games take advantage of what they're offering in terms of speed with the Series X because we should really be seeing a bigger jump in terms of speed for the PlayStation 5. But again, it's a slight small difference between the two. The Series X loads it a bit faster than the PlayStation 5, just a slight difference. So not that big of a deal, but again, we all expected the PlayStation 5 just to load these games in like half the time or something like that. But the PlayStation 5 specific games still load instantaneously and the real test is going to come when we see third party games that are made for Xbox Series X and made for PlayStation 5 go head to head in terms of bootload speeds, in terms of their loading speeds and how fast they load in comparison to each other because those games are made for these consoles so they should really take advantage of what's being offered. We'll have to wait on that. And one last thing I wanted to note is the PlayStation 5, we found out, does not have quick resume, which kind of was disappointing to me. Maybe you guys might not care. I thought that was a really cool feature on the Series X, and I kind of was hoping the PlayStation 5 would have it. It's not saying, it's not to say that Sony couldn't have it in the future. They could, they just don't right now. So overall, from what I've heard, from what we covered here today in this video and from other reviews, the PlayStation 5 is very quiet, has a fast UI, surprisingly good backwards compatibility support. Let's not put that down. They have a great they have great backwards compatibility support on the PlayStation 5. It's big, which some might hate, others might love. The big design of the PlayStation 5. The SSD is smaller than what's being offered on the Series X with 667 gigabytes as opposed to, I believe, like 800 plus on the Series X. And the controller is the most impressive next-gen feeling thing across any console so far. So that's really it. A lot of positive stuff for the PlayStation 5. I'm excited for it next week. Hopefully this video gave you a general idea of what's being said. And if you guys did enjoy this video, please hit that like button. As it always helps and subscribe if you're new. I got new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And now I'll check you guys out on the next one. And welcome back to the after show. This is the part of the video where we have a little fun down in the comments below. If you're old, welcome back. If you're new, welcome. For today's thing, what I want you guys to do is to body, obliterate, destroy, and overall harass the comment section with the glowing reviews are in. I believe that's pretty self-explanatory. So if you're excited for the PlayStation 5, destroy the comment section with the glowing reviews are in. And I'll definitely heart those comments like I always do because I appreciate everybody who stays to the end of my videos. And now I'll check you guys out on the next one.